So welcome to our Pitta Reducing Practice. We are doing a shorter practice today because sometimes you just don't have a lot of time. And so we are just going to take a shorter practice and how can I give myself the practice that I need to calm down Pitta, calm down the fire element. So we're going to use a practice in the evening. This is an evening practice. So you do want it to be uh, more relaxed, more bringing in uh, ease to the body because you want to sleep at night. So you don't want to do your really intense workouts and practices at night. That's going to affect your sleep. So let's get started with our pitta reducing practice, starting at the top of your mat. Okay, let me move my chair over. Okay, so when you come to the top of your mat, we're going to take a moment. So you're standing here at the top of your mat. And we're going to take a moment to actually balance our breath. So you're going to take two fingers and your thumb. Place two fingers at the bridge of the nose. Take a breath through both nostrils. Inhale. Then using your thumb, close the right nostril. Exhale out of the left. Inhale left, then close the left with your ring finger, exhale right. Inhale right, close the right, exhale left. Inhale left, close, exhale right. Inhale right, close, exhale left. Inhale, close the left, exhale right. Inhale, close, exhale left. And then release your hands. And bring your awareness into your breath and notice that the breath has balanced out. Breath is now able to move equally balanced through both of the nostrils. Filling the head. Filling the skull, the brain. Begin to feel your breath moving down into the belly, the pelvis, the chest, the ribs, the shoulders. Fill the whole body with breath. Inhaling. Diaphragm is dropping down. Exhaling. Completely emptying out the breath. Diaphragm moves up. All right. And then bringing your hands to your heart. Good. From there, inhaling up. Reach. Take a nice stretch here. Really stretch your body. And then exhale, dropping into a forward fold. Inhale, come back up again. Exhale again, dropping into a forward fold. We're going to do this three times. Inhale, up, reaching up. Exhale down. From there, you're going to step back into down dog. Good. Now you're going to drop the right knee. Take it to the ground. Open up and reach. So it's a variation of side plank. Then that left arm swings around, press up into three-legged dog, reach. Then step that right leg forward, drop the back knee. Inhale up, reach. And then exhale, rotate. Pause there. Every time you do rotations, rotations are a way of helping to assimilate and digest. So mentally, physically, emotionally. So it's very supportive for the fire element, for the pitta constitution. 
And then that hand that's on the knee releases to the floor where the foot is. Lift your back leg. The hand that's at the back reaches up. Hold it there. So you're giving yourself a bigger lunge. Or stretch through both legs. Feel the day releasing from your tissues. Any tension. Then swinging the upper arm around, step back down dog. Hold it there. Draw the navel in and get hollow in your belly. Open up your armpits. And soften the breath. You want to do a one-to-one -one breath. What does that mean? It means you're inhaling four counts, exhaling four counts. And then dropping the left knee. So the left knee drops down, turn the foot out. And then open up. A variation of Vashistasana, side plank. Reach, extend. The upper arm then swings around. And now the left leg is going to shoot up, three-legged dog. Draw that right heel down. Then that left leg steps forward and drop the back knee, lift up. Now, if you're feeling wobbly, it means you just need to widen your base and then rotate. So you're sitting up tall and you're rotating. Again, remembering that every time you rotate, and we don't have to do a really intense practice to get tremendous benefit. You don't have to. We really need to pay attention to Pitta thinks they need that. They think they need intensity to reach their goal, right? And they don't. They actually need the opposite. They need a challenge, but they need to do it in a way that is more flowing, more fluid. All right, then the hand that's at the knee drops to the ground next to the foot, and then lift your back leg up. So it's a nice big lunge. Stack your shoulders and then reach the arm up. Oh, that feels good. Then swing the arm around and step back down dog. Hold it there. Get hollow in your belly. And again, you're connecting with breath. Breathing in four counts. Breathing out four counts. One-to-one -one breath to so balance it out. We did, we started out balancing breath by doing the alternate nostril breath. So you want to maintain that balanced breath. Good, then we're going to shift into plank. Modify to the knees if you need to. You do not have to do that. Then slowly lower. You're on your tummy. And then take your arms behind you, interlace and lift the chest up off the ground. Now lift your legs up off the ground and hold it. So anytime you do poses where you are on your tummy, you are also helping a simulation and digestion, stimulating those belly organs. So the organs in your tummy, the organs in your belly, in the torso, and then releasing hands then come to the chest Press up, Bhujanasana, and then take it back, down dog. Right leg drops down again, and you're going to open up, Vashastasana. You have the option now of taking the right leg and extending it right out underneath you. You do not have to. You can keep the leg down. Really up to you. How strong do you feel today? Pitta likes that challenge, so they can do it as long as they're not increasing heat and intensity in the body. Then that left hand comes down, reaching the right leg up, three-legged dog, draw your left heel down. Good. 
Stepping the right leg forward again, dropping the back knee and separating your base if you need to for balance, rotate. Now see if you can open up the chest and reach back behind you. Now you might be able to reach your heel and if you can't, you can just take your hand to a block. So you're opening up. Good, and now that left hand goes to the ground right where the foot is. Again, you're going up into a high lunge, stacking your shoulders, so make sure you have that rotation. But this time you're gonna reach the upper arm alongside the ear. Big opening for that side body now, releasing tension out of the rib cage. Then swing the arm around. Step back, down dog. Shift forward, plank. Lower all the way to the ground. Interlace your fingers behind you and lift your thighs up off the ground. Release, hands then to the chest, press up, Buddhasana, and then back down dog. Hold it, balancing out your breath. Left leg drops, opening up, Vashastasana, reach side plank or Take the leg out in front of you, press up. You don't have to, it's an option. You could stay here, totally up to you. Then the upper arm swings around and you're gonna take that left leg up into three-legged dog. Draw your right heel down. Then that left leg steps forward, drop your back knee, widen your base so you can balance, rotate. Now, if you curl your toes under behind you, you might be able to reach for your heel. And you can bring your arm up, that's an option. Or use a block, here or here. It's just another way of kind of deepening that rotation. And then the upper hand reaches down. Take it to next to the foot. Open up, it's a big lunge. Upper arm goes up and then reach that upper arm alongside the ear. Now you always can use a block. Remember this is your practice. Nice and strong, steady. Swing the arm around. Step back, down dog. Shift forward, plank. Lower. Interlace your fingers. Lift. Keep lifting. I'm rotating side to side because the camera rotates me, makes it look like I'm on the wrong side as you guys. All right, then hands at the chest. Press up, Cobra Bhujanasana. And then back down dog. Good, right leg now comes up and steps forward. You're going into warrior two, open up. Look down the middle right finger. Strong and steady. Dropping into side angle. Again, strong and steady. Keep your chin pulled in. Then the upper arm swings around and you're gonna rotate, reach. Again, that arm goes alongside the ear. All right, now, 
lifts, upper arm swings around, goes to the ground, back leg steps in, and then you straighten both legs and drop your torso right there down in front of the leg. Now, one of the tendencies in this pose is to shift your hip forward. Okay, I want you to move your right hip back. Move it back. So right hip goes back, left hip forward. So you're squaring your hips. You wanna be flat here on the torso or on the pelvis at the sacrum, dropping your head into the knee. And then left hand next to that front foot, open up, Parvarita Trikonasana. Stack the right shoulder on top of the left. Swing the arm around and step back, down dog. Even out your breath. Shift forward plank, lower. And then lift everything up, arms and legs, or you can go back to here. Thighs off the ground. Or you're reaching your arms up above you like a superhero. Good, then hands to the chest, push up, Ujjanasana. Press back, Adha Savasana, down dog. Then that left leg steps forward, warrior two. Lining up, heel to heel, open. Look down the middle left finger. We're dropping into Parjvokanasana, side angle. Or you can go to the floor, or you can use a block here. Then you're going to swing the arm around. And then that hand goes to the ground. You're going into a high lunge again. Reach. Stack your shoulder, left shoulder on top of the right. Back leg is strong. Don't let the knee sag. Back leg is strong. Then swing the upper arm around. Hands on the ground and then pull your back leg in. Okay, and then you want to move, straighten legs, move the left hip back. Same thing, you guys. So there is a tendency for the hip to shift forward, move it back. Okay, so the left hip goes back, the right hip comes forward. You are squaring those hips. Leveling out here, so the sacrum is level. Dropping your head down, relax your head. So let go through the neck. Short. You can use a block for sure, no problem. And then, if you have a block, you do that. You want to bring it to the big toe side of the foot, or you just use your hand and open up, stack left shoulder on top of the right. Or eventually you go to the baby toe side of the foot. Keep the hips square. Stack left shoulder on top of the right. Both legs straight. Then swing the arm around and step back, down dog. Shift forward, plank lower. And then once again, you are lifting either here or Superman, Shalambasana, lift. Stack. 
Stay lifted. Soften your face. Soften your breath. One to one breath. Hands at the chest. Push up Bhujanasana. Cobra. Press back. Adho Mukha Savasana. Good. You're going to walk your feet in. And then sit. Right leg comes up and goes over the left leg. Rotate. Pause there. Now, watch out for your spine. Keep it lifted. Remember, the spine is your energy highway. That is actually where Kundalini lifts up. What is Kundalini? Kundalini is the energy that's dormant in the base of the pelvis. That as you begin to open, it starts to move. It's a whole topic, it's involved, but you want to start opening up your energy channels. You want to open up the major channels, and then that feeds the more subtle channels. You have over 70,000 small channels throughout the body called nadis. In Ayurveda, we call the major channels the shrotas. Okay, good. And then from there you release. And then the left leg comes up and goes over the right. Sitting up tall, rotate. Good, and then from there, reaching forward, pulling your flesh away, forward fold. Drop your head. Good. And then from there, you're going to actually shift your hips forward, take it back, lift up, and doing a modified shoulder stand. Now, I always like to give modifications. There are some people that are not able to lift their pelvis. You're just going to take a block, place it right under, and that is going to be your variation. Modified shoulder stand means your toes are above your eyes, not your head, your eyes. Modified shoulder stand, Sarvangasana means you are supporting your pelvis. Then the right leg drops and the left leg goes up. Right leg drops, left leg is up. Release, the right leg goes up. Now left leg down, right leg up. Keep your head forward. Do not turn your head when you are in shoulder stand or plow. And then lifting up, slowly lower, go all the way to the ground. And then your legs are going to open up. So you're going to open knees first and then grab your big toe. So you're bent in your knee, grab your big toe and then push out and see if you could do a nice wide legged stretch but get your sacrum 
to the ground. So you have to activate there. Activate. Press your sacrum to the ground. Now, if that's not working for you, you just grab below the ankle. No problem. Press through your heels. Press, press, press. Woo. Then you're going to bring your feet together and drop them down for Supta Baddha Konasana. Arms go above the head. Release. Open up the pelvis. Soften. Connecting with your breath. Feel breath moving in through the nose. Both nostrils balanced, filling the pelvis, the belly, the ribs, the chest, the throat and shoulders, the head. Let go of tension that might have built through the day. Release. Good, and then your hands come down, bring your legs together, draw the knees in, open up your arms to the side, drop your legs to the right, look to the left. Right hand comes up on the left leg. Make sure you are at a 90 degree angle here in the pelvis. Sometimes people drop their legs. You see that? You're not gonna get anything there. Bring your legs up. Come right out of the pelvis, 90 degree angle in the hip. And then turn your head and look down the left arm. Breathe into that side body on the left-hand side, ribs, belly. So anytime you do a twist, what it is actually doing, it is massaging your internal organs. And by massaging, it's a way of helping to stimulate and support digestion and assimilation. And that is what Pitta needs, when there's anger, there's pressure building, you need a release. So you do rotation, it's a way of, it's like taking a washcloth and squeezing out excess water. It's the same idea, you're doing a rotation to squeeze out excess heat and pressure, stress, resistance. And then the legs come up and go to the left. And again, you want to go right out of the pelvis there. Don't drop those legs. Keep them up. Breathe. Look down that right arm. Get a bigger twist out of it. Breathe into your ribs. Breathe into your belly. Breathe into your chest. And let go of your day. Have the intention of releasing. Letting go of resistance. Where are you holding? Oftentimes people hold in the face. They hold in the shoulders. They hold in their butt. They squeeze their butt cheeks. Let go. Good, and then from there, release. And then you're going to bring your feet flat on the ground, finding your heels, pressing up into bridge, pause, right arm reaches up. The left hand is actually holding the ankle, holding the heel. Good, and then release from there. That right hand comes down. Push up again, and now your left hand goes up, and you're holding your right hand here at the heel and the ankle. And hold. 
Left hand is up, right hand is down. Good, and then release. That left hand comes down, drawing both hands on the knees, going in a circle in one direction. I don't care what direction you go. Just go in one direction. And now go in the other direction. In a circle. Good, and then from there, setting yourself up for Shavasana. Extending those legs to the corners of your mat, arms below the heart, palms up, cover your eyes. The eyes are connected to the fire element. Okay, you really wanna shut down the eyes, pacify the fire element by cooling everything down. If you let, put an eye mask or a washcloth, something over your eyes, what it does is it stops stimulating them. When you have a lot of heat going on in your body, you should not be watching TV. You wanna really limit the amount of, you know, devices that you're looking at because it overstimulates the eyes. And then in Shavasana Corpse Pose, you're letting your body relax. What does ease feel like? If you were to have ease in your body, what would it feel like? Bring ease and softness into your face, into your eyes. Let your eyeballs drop into the eye socket. Get really relaxed there. Feel all sides of your head soften. And if you were to have ease, softness in the neck and throat, what would that feel like? Bring that into your shoulders and your arms. Keep softening. Ease, be effortless. And then softening the front body, so the chest, the diaphragm, the belly. Notice on your inhale, the diaphragm moves down naturally towards the pelvis. On the exhale, it moves back up. It's all done without effort. You don't need to do it. And then begin to soften your back body. Feel your back body completely supported by the ground. What does the ground provide for us? Coolness, stability. Strength. Let that ease and softness move into the pelvis, softening your pelvis, softening the floor of the pelvis, the perineum. Bring in awareness to all sides of your pelvis, the back of your pelvis, and then soften it. The sides of your pelvis, where the head of the, the leg bone, the femur bone, comes into the pelvis, soften there. The front of the pelvis, soften there. And then the bottom of the pelvis, the floor of the pelvis, soften the floor of the pelvis. Oftentimes, 
The inhale is where you really want to feel the softening. So as you inhale, there's a lengthening that's happening with the diaphragm moving down towards the pelvis. And you can continue this feeling of relaxation all the way down into the floor of the pelvis. And then let that softening, that ease, move into the legs, the thighs, the hamstrings, the knees, the lower leg, the ankles, down into your feet, top of your feet, bottom of your feet, and then every toe, soft. Ease. Feel ease in your skin. Right? The skin is all encompassing. We're feeling our own presence when we connect with our skin. Feel your presence and bring ease to it. Soften all your tissues, so you're softening your tissues as a whole. Any other parts of you where you might notice where you're holding, let that go. Or just be aware of it, bring breath there. Imagine that you could bring this soft, supported ease into your bones. Your bones are still stable, they're strong, they support you, but it's not done in this rigid way. It's relaxed and stable and fluid. And then just letting everything be still, silent. All right, then bringing some awareness into your breath again. Allowing some movement into your fingers and your toes. Gently then rolling to your right side. Bring yourself up to a comfortable seated position. All right, and hands together, connecting your thumbs to your heart. Soften, breath, and body. Ease, breathe in ease. And let it be what carries you through the rest of the evening. Every breath is a breath of ease. Let that ease settle into the mind. And then begin to permeate into your emotional body. Softening there. Let it further support you towards a peaceful night of sleep. Namaste. Beautiful.